Let's start by focusing on our main event. It's been a long and difficult journey for Darren Barker from Barnet to the Boardwalk Hall. Tonight, the unbeaten former European champion gets his shot at boxing's big time. It is my moment, my moment to shine, and it would be a, an absolute dream come true. Every night I, I run through it, how I'm going to celebrate, how I'm going to win. I'm so passionate about this fight. When that bell goes, I'm going to get in there and do whatever it takes to win. I started at Finchley. Um, you know, I had some good times there, and you know, they helped me develop me into a boxer. Um, you know, I learnt the basics, but um, you know, it's no disrespect to Finchley at all. You know, my dad boxed for Repton, so it was, I suppose, a natural sort of progression was me to move to Repton. It just really, really developed me at a time when I was slowly starting to mature as well, and it just took me on leaps and bounds. You constantly start setting new goals, and before I knew it, I'd won a gold medal for England at Tough Multi Nations in Hungary not long after winning the ABCs, and then I'd been picked for the Commonwealth Games, and it was just it happened so quickly from winning my first title to being selected for this major tournament for your country. I mean, I just took each fight as it came, and b before you knew it, I was a gold medalist. It was unreal. Timothy Bradley! One of the stars of the England team here. Everyone in the amateur game has huge hopes for 20-year-old Darren Barker. He's a great fighter. I remember at the time, um, it was short, shortly after the Commonwealth Games, and uh, I mean, I could have retired then. Um, I'd achieved something. But oh, we was getting funded at the time. You know, to keep the funding, you've got to fight against America. So I got in there when I weren't really ready for it, and yeah, he beat me hands down, you know, fair and square. Regardless of what happens, injuries and whatnot, I'm in a good place at the minute. You know, I wake up every morning, I turn around and I see my beautiful daughter, my beautiful girlfriend, and uh, that gives me the drive and the determination to get up and do my runs and get in the gym and, and, and makes me want to achieve things, not just for me, but for my family. Scarlet, Scarlet. My dad, he's so modest, he wouldn't, you know, if it wasn't for my mum and people around me, I don't suppose I would have really known my dad was a boxer. You know, he never ever pushed me into it at all, and it wasn't until I had my first fight, he's obviously been my number one fan, he's been to every single fight. It was hard when my brother went, because I just felt lonely, I, I felt lost, I felt, you know, my closest friend in, in life, not just boxing, had gone, and it was like, hold on, I've got to try and do this on my own now. And it, that's why I took some time out, it was, it was difficult. There was obviously a void in my life, and uh, uh, when I eventually did get back in the gym the second time, it was obvious to me that it was boxing I was missing. I was struggling to move, to be honest with you, a, a little bit, and uh, I just thought I'd stand my ground. I mean, at the end there, I started moving a little bit just because I thought I got to get out of here, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I knew I'd done enough, and it was just a matter of you know grinding out the rounds, and uh, you know it just shows how much the title means to me, and I think it showed it in that fight. I was over the moon because my sort of goal, I suppose, was to to be European champion or thereabouts by the end of the year, and I'd I'd achieved that. I didn't show people really what I was capable of due to my fitness and my conditioning. It was important for me to go and get the surgery done. It was a lot of uh, rehab after the hip and, um, and uh, you know, it all went well, a lot of hydrotherapy and, uh, yeah, feeling, feeling good now. It was so frustrating, you know, missing out, just seeing everyone else perform and doing well and just not being able to do anything about it. It was uh, an absolute nightmare, but I was always positive about the future. I knew eventually my body would come good again. And a new European middleweight champion, it's the dazzling Darren Barker! I look at Matthew Macklin and, and, and I see a pound note sign, if you like, caped in glory. So, you know, it's something that down the line, hopefully, for us and for the British boxing public, you know, we'd love to see it one day. I'll say one thing now, I mean, because I'm sick of talking about Matthew Macklin, you know, but I'm just disappointed the fight hasn't happened because at the minute, and obviously rightfully so, I mean, I'm sitting at number two in the British rankings, and uh, it's so annoying because I know I'm number one. I definitely want Macklin's name on my record. I want to prove 
to anyone out there, any Macklin fans or anyone who, who questioned if I can beat him or not, that I'm the better fighter out of the two of us. So, you know, he wants to get in his head that he won't be fighting Martinez unless it's a warm-up for me. I've been boxing now for so long. I mean, why should I fear anyone? Why wouldn't I want to fight the best, regardless of the outcome? I mean, why wouldn't I want to get in there and test myself and say, look, I got in there with the best in the world, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world in Martinez. Why wouldn't I want to do that? I haven't stopped watching him. We've been watching his strengths, his weaknesses, um, and, and his opponent's strengths and weaknesses, and what they've done well and what they've done wrong. And um, together we've come up with a plan which we believe will, uh, will beat Martinez. It's just a matter of me executing it on the night. His hand speed is, is, is very elusive, and um, obviously, if, if he's given the opportunity, he can whack a bit as well. What a punch from nowhere! Left hook, Williams is out! I sound a bigger man in there. So I can rough him up. And you've got to remember, you know, he started boxing when he was 20, and I started when I was 12. So I've got the, the pedigree there. Me fighting at Atlantic City against Sergio Martinez, it just proves and shows that I've been doing something right. You know, my career's gone in the right, right direction. I've done everything right. And, uh, you know, I owe it to myself to, to go out there now, show the world and to myself what I can do. The underdog's someone who's got a heart like I have and the determination and, and the will to win as I have, then there's more, there's definitely a chance of a massive upset on the cards. It's a wonderful story. Spencer, you've been part of that story. You've known him mm -hmm. since he was, what, 10 years old? Yep, I've known him right from the beginning, Darren, as he said, there in the piece. He's, you know, he boxed for Finchley. My dad was one of the first people to train him, and he's gone on from strength to strength. And, you know, that's a testament to the person he is there. What you see there is exactly who Darren Barker is. And, you know, he's 29 years of age. He's been British, he's been Commonwealth, been European champion. This is his big shot, and he wants it against a pound for pound. And, you know, he truly believes that he can win this. And, you know, I don't know if it's my emotion or my heart leading my head, but I've got this little feeling, this inkling, that he can pull this off. He's been... He's, he's held himself so well in the build-up to this fight with, with such dignity. Yeah, he has. I've been very impressed with him in the run-up to this contest, especially over there. He, um, he stayed very focused. He's been out and about talking. He's very, very confident. And you've got to have that confidence. But he's got a good team around him as well that are protecting him from certain situations, which is important. But, yeah, he's walking. He's very relaxed. And, as I say, confidence is the number one thing. Going into a fight like this against the... The number one pound for pound in the middleweight division. It's uh, it's a it's a great achievement, and not only that, he's, it's not as if he's picked a Felix Sturm or one of the other champions. He's picked the guy who, who's recognised as the best. Richie, this is the guy that he's always wanted. And look, the, the the film that we're looking at now. This is how relaxed he's been since this fight was announced. And then you'd think, will nerves start creeping in at the weigh-in? No, they haven't done. I spoke to Eddie Earn earlier on today, and I said to him, how's he feeling today? You think you're waiting to hear? Yep, it's starting to get to him a little bit, but it's not. He's relishing in it. He he really wants Stop it and, and he truly believes he's got the tools to do it. And, you know, he's got tremendous amateur pedigree. Yes, he knows it's a mammoth task, but as I said, I think well, you, he's got You know a yourself, good Johnny, being away from home, it's, it's a tough ask, isn't it, anywhere? It brings the best out or the worst out in fights. Absolutely. If you're away from home, no matter what, you're either going to go into your shell or mm. you're going to mm. all of a sudden believe in yourself and that's what you're seeing well, yeah. from Barker when he talks. Yeah. Well, you can it. see that he's not going to go into that shell mm. and that's what I say, he's going to go down. If he goes down, he'll go down fighting, trust me. He really is going to go there and he's going to give it a shot. Mm. But he's up against it, Johnny. I mean, you've been <laughs> assessing Martinez over the years. How good is he? I mean, he's been no overnight success. No, no, no. I, he's improved with age, with fights. Uh, fights he's had... He's got better. Fight, any re return fight he's had, he's improved on it from, a, a, from either beating somebody on points, then all of a sudden to knocking them out. We saw him box Richard Williams in Belfast. Remember, he boxed Richard Williams before and beat him on points, came back, bullied, beat him up. Richard Williams, domestically, won a decent fighter, fight, yeah. a good fight. He could fight, yeah. technically everything. He bullied him, he beat him, he beat him up. And, and he's yes, done it the hard way as well, because he, I think he's had something like 45 fights before he got a shot yeah. at an interim world title. That's so right. he's done it the hard way, this kid. I, and, and the other thing is this, he spent a lot of his time over here in Europe uh, learning his trade. And to do that away from home, for any fighter to do that away from your home comforts, 
is a big cat. Listen, big Mark, Martinez is a great fighter, no getting away from that. But look, if you look at the record and look what he's done, it's only his last three fights and all of a sudden he's elevated to pound for pound the third best in the world. So, you know, that might be a little bit flattering as well. You know, I think that people may be getting a little bit carried away. With it. I'm not I'm not taking well, away that he's an excellent fight. fighter. He's only, but he's only had four had... fights at middweight. Yeah, yeah so, he? I mean, he still takes that speed, though, what, from the light middleweight division. What gives division. him that little bit of special is because he's done something what most fighters don't do, and that is take himself away from home yeah. and boxing sure, everybody's but backyard. He done, but he's done that, he done that from the beginning. He's done that from the beginning, so he's yeah. trained to do that. You know, it's, it's not it's not alien to him. You know, he was boxing out in Spain for years before he came to Britain. You know, he's gone over to America, so the, he's never really the, boxing in Argentina anyway. The, the coming out party, if you like, was the, the Kelly Pavlik fight, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Boss Kelly, Kelly Pavlik, uh, he was a heavy-handed hitter. Yeah. But Kelly Pavlik could fight, could fight for fun. This man, uh, Martinez, has come up from light middleweight, use light middleweight speed, but light heavyweight power to bully, terrorize, uh, break a man down, and, and, and just do at, at will what he wanted to as a southpaw, use that left, right, left, that awkward style as a southpaw, you, leading with a backhand. You could, say, you could say that he got Pavlik at the right time. Pavlik was coming off a loss here to Bernard Hopkins and was possibly on the slide here, so it could have just been He was about mentally fragile, but Pavlik was, he is a good fighter, but what impressed me so much about this performance, he dismantled him. Yeah. He not only yeah. outboxed him, he muscled him, Pavlik at the end was cut over both yeah. eyes, his nose was bleeding, yeah. he was totally demoralised. Ment mentally, mentally broke him. Broke mentally him broke him. But he's got better <laughs> and better and better, Johnny, hasn't he? Yeah, he, look, he boxed Paul Williams. Uh, the year, the first, the first time he boxed Paul Williams, he lost on points. Then he comes back with this con concussive uh, 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 knockout of Paul Williams. He did so, so well. People didn't expect him to lose to Paul Williams because of the fight they had a year before. But the natural shot that he falls, boom, oh, that left hand shot. over the if top. If you have a nervous disposition, look away yeah. now. What a punch. Punch. <laughs> and if you watch how he's throwing it, he's even looking away, but he knows yeah. where it's going. It's a looping shot and over the top. And that's my fear. Have you, that's my only fear with him boxing Barker, because when I see Barker box, yeah. he throws a shot and he pulls back chin first, then yeah. follows but with the hands. His natural shot is throwing a big left hand over the top. Over if the I top. was him and I'd watch Barker box, yeah. I'd think I can throw that shot blind. However, well, Johnny, you, you know yourself. With, with Darren, Darren is technically very, very very correct. You know, he's done it all right from the amateurs, go, going winning Commonwealth games, you know, so technically he's really, really good. He will know that. He will know that they've worked to a game plan. He will keep his hands tight. And but, you know I mean look look at the company he's keeping, hmm. the pound for pound yeah. rankings. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, but then Dave, I tell you, I would dispute then. that a little yeah, bit because here, uh, because I put a fighter at uh, number three in, in that in that category there. Someone who has probably ruled the division for five mm -hmm. or six years, who, who or has come up through the weights. This fella hasn't done that. He sort of come onto the scene two or three years ago in the American yeah. public by knocking out Williams, then became a sensation. He was something like 35 years of age then. So I think that's just a little I, bit I, premature, I, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, I think he's it's impressive. A, but, he's, he's come up with impressive knockouts. Uh, yeah. uh, Pavlik, uh, 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 Williams, Zinzerok. So they're thinking, this guy is the man. But really, I don't think he deserves that. I mean, that let's face it, he really had a bad 2009. He drew with Kermit Cintron mm. for the WBC mm. light middleweight title. But and then gets beat, then, then he gets beat against Paul Williams the but first he, but time. But he keeps improving each fight. If he loses to a man, he'll come back and not just beat him, beat him up. Yeah. Or, or stop him. It's that speed he's got, as you say, he's taking up from light middle. Very, very quick. And he's got the power as well. Exceptional power.